from the hallway. We're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Let's go ahead and lift up our voices and lift our hands and say, Father God, we worship you this morning. We come to you with a heart of worship. We want you to uh, reach us, out, reach out to us, Father God, tonight as we reach out to you. We want us, we want us, we want you to touch us, Father God. I thank you right now that you just fall in this place. Your presence is a tangible presence that falls in this place right now, Father God, and changes each and every one of us as we as we worship you today. I thank you that you fall in the uh, minister of today, and I thank you that you speak to each and every one of us through the unction of the Holy Spirit. I thank you that questions are answered and lives are changed. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
appraisal. So some of that can be, be that as well. You know, God trying to get that stuff through us, through our imperfect vessel. Amen. But I believe we've got a word from the Lord for you today. That's right. Amen. It's okay to laugh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to smile. Tell your face you're happy. Amen. Glory to God. I know all of you are happy. Have the joy of the Lord. Just tell your face. Amen. That you're happy. Glory to God. If you're happy and you know it, do what? Clap, Clap your hands. Amen. Oh, yeah. I know I got you now, boy. That's right. Amen. And so we are endeavoring to give you a word, glory to God, that's going to uh, encourage you, propel you, enlighten you, and give you direction for your life. We're, be we're believing that the Holy Spirit is going to minister to your hearts and minds today. Now, remember, I didn't know who was going to be here today. I'm going to go ahead and say that up front. If, I, if it, me and my foal was here, you know, I would have just ministered to them. And, of course, really, at the end of the day, whatever I speak is for me first. Amen? So the Lord didn't show me your face and say, you know, I need you to say this for this person today. Amen? He did not do that. He just gave me the message, and he knew you was going to be here. So that's why he told me to say what I'm going to say. Amen? So you got, to, you got to believe that I'm ministering. A, you got to, remember, you got to have your expectation out. God is going to speak a word to you that's for you. Amen. Custom fit just for you. Now, everything that I say may not be exactly for you, but I'm sure it's going to touch some area in your life. You have to have faith to believe that God can use me because if he can use a donkey and talk through a donkey, surely he can talk through me. Amen. Hallelujah. So with that in mind, I'm believing that God's going to speak a word through me to you to address some issues in your life that may need some adjustment, may need some change. Amen? All right. Turn in your Bibles with me to Proverbs, Proverbs the third chapter. Amen? We're going to start there, Proverbs the third chapter. And we are ministering on the topic of being led by the Spirit or spirit, the Spirit-led life. Amen? Because as Christians, we need to know how to hear and be directed by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And as I say in all of my messages, you want to take good notes. Amen? You want to make note of what's being said because this is going to impact your life. Amen? If you receive it and become a doer of it. Amen? Amen. You want to be a doer of the word. Amen? You just don't want to hear the word and... You know, just, oh, that was a good, that was a good poignant message, and you know, man, it was very interesting today. You know, well, what did you, what was the most important thing that you heard today? Well, you know, all of it was good. Okay, well, we believe that all is going to be good, amen. But you need to get something that you can use, amen. Amen. We're trying to, we're trying to sharpen your sword up, glory to God. You know, the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, and so. You know, you, ha you have the weapon. The weapon of your warfare is the word of God. Amen? And if you know how to effectively use the word of God, you're going to be a great warrior for the kingdom of God. And you're going to stick your foot on the devil's head, on his neck, and break his hold over your life. Amen? And over your children's life. And over the lives of the people that you know, are in your near circle. Amen? Glory to God. You'll be able to have something that you can give to people when they come up talking about, well, I don't know what I'm doing. This is heaven. Oh, I got you. I got you. Got you. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke that off of you. We command it to leave. We command it to take its hand off of you. And we will cast it down now in the name of Jesus. And when you walk in power, glory to God. When you walk in power, glory to God, then the devil just can't pull anything off. Amen? You want to be full of God's spirit. You want to be full of God's word so you can give, so you can be light and salt. Amen? You want to be light and salt. You don't want to be sitting there crying in your hands all the time because you don't know what you're going to do. You don't want to be calling to this one and calling to that one because you don't, you don't have the resources to get it done. Amen? 
we all run into tough spots, but we don't need to be running to people. We need to run to God. Amen. Because, you know, God ain't going to go and talk about you behind your back. Amen. Well, you know, they called me the other day, and whew, they was, it was that sad story again. You know, you're sitting there like, hmm. Oh, well, you know. But you don't, you know, God ain't going to talk about you. God ain't going to lean over to Jesus. He ain't gonna be, you see that? You know. Jesus, what are we going to do with them? And sometimes I hate that I made them. No, 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 no. No, God never do that. Amen. We've been fearfully and wonderfully made. You are not a mistake. Amen. Say that, I am not a mistake. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Glory to God. Now, that's not to say that you don't make some mistakes, but you were not a mistake when God created you. Amen. And, you know, we all were created by God, but we are not all the children of God. There is a difference because you hear people say, make this statement, well, we're all God's children. No, no we're not. No, we're not. I ain't even got on my sermon yet. But praise God. You know, we're not all God's children. We're all created by God. But you know, uh, the Bible says in John 1 and 12, it says, but as many as received him, that them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So therefore, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are not a child of God. But at the end of this sermon, we're going to give you a chance to be a child of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, because we don't want you to leave this place, you know, and not know how to be led by the Spirit. And the first criteria of being led by the Spirit is you must be a child of God. Amen. God is, you know, people say, well, you know, well, God talked to me too. But, you know, they ain't no more saved than the rock, on the rock in the driveway. They ain't never received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Jesus said, I'm the door. You can't, you can't enter into this thing except through me. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man, can everybody say no man, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. You got to, you got to enter into the straight way. You got to enter in through the door. Jesus said, I'm the door. You ain't coming through Hare Krishna. You ain't coming through Buddha. You ain't coming through, uh, you know, uh, uh, Watchtower, Jehovah Witness, that stuff. He ain't coming through none of that. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, somebody say amen up in here. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I guess I ought to get to this sermon. We're talking about being led of the Spirit. Amen. And, you know, you need to get to know, and the way that you get to know God is through his word. Amen. That's the first that's the first criteria for getting to know God and being led of the Spirit is to understand and realize that God's word is for all humanity, not just for the preacher, not just for the, the fivefold ministry gifts, not just for certain individuals. You know, not in the Old Testament, you know, the only ones that could hear from God was the prophet, the priest, and the king. Those are the only three. You know, good for them, yay. You know, but if you wasn't one of them, you know, you had to wait for them to tell you what God said. But now we have a better covenant built upon better promises, amen. We ain't got to go to the prophet and say, you know, Prophet Joe, uh, what did the Lord say? I don't know. What your money look like? Did you bring your offering? You know, because, you know, you got to bring something for you before Prophet Joe tell you something now. Amen. Oh, don't shut me down in this Holy Ghost church. Amen. But now we have a better promise. We have a better covenant built upon better promises. And not only can we know the Lord, know the voice of the Lord, but the Holy Spirit takes up residence on the inside of us. Amen. We have inside information. Glory to God. We have insider trading. Glory to God going on. 24-7, 365. You know, I, my, uh, I had a loved one to go home and be with the Lord. And, you know, uh, just recently here, and, you know, people would ask me, well, did you, well, were they sick? I said, well, no, not really. 
He said, well, you know, well, did you, you know, did you, how, how are you taking it? I said, oh, well, we've known for some time that uh, she's, they were getting ready to leave. You know, and then, then it got down to kind of look kind of sideways. And yeah, yeah, the Lord had already talked to me and told me that they were getting ready to go. You know, a couple of years prior. You know, that's what a relationship with God does for you. Because you can be in front of things that happen to your loved ones. And then there are occasions where you can do something about it. But then and there are occasions when you cannot do something about it. Because there are things that are working in the background that you don't have privilege or knowledge of that you can't do anything about. You know, I heard Brother Hagen talk about uh, there was a, an individual that was, uh, you know, had, had become deathly sick and they called him up to the hospital, and, you know, he was, pre he was, he was praying and, and interceding for this individual, and the Lord just told Brother Hagin, look, you know, there's some things that have been set in motion, you know, before, you know, and they cannot be altered at this time, you know. And so his response was, well, let's just pray and, and hold him here until family can come in and they can say goodbye, their goodbyes, and of course the, the individual, you know, went on to be with the Lord. But see, the, the point that I'm making here is you, as Christians, we ought to have such a relationship with God that things just don't take us off guard. You don't get, you don't get sideswiped. You're not, you know, oh, I can't believe that happened, you know. No, 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 no. We, 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 we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And he's a genius, and he knows everything. Amen? I'm so thankful for the Holy Ghost on the inside. Because I don't have to be caught off guard. You don't have to be caught off guard. You can know what God is doing. You know, I hear some of the most, and they think they're being spiritual when they, when they make this statement. You just never know what the Lord's doing. Oh, you know, you just never know what the Lord is doing. No, no, I do know what the Lord is doing. He's doing what his words say. If you know, see, when someone makes that, makes that statement, they really, they, they have located themselves as not knowing the word of God. You just, you don't have a relationship with God. Because, see, in John 16 and 13, if you want to turn there with us, John 16, 13, when you have it, say Amen. I think they're going to put it up on the screen for us. There we go. It says, how be it, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mine and show it unto you. Amen. This, this is a promise of God. And it cannot be altered, amen, if you put your trust and your reliance in God's ability to communicate to you, amen. And see, as a child of God, this is your right to have a, have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. This is, this is what has been put in place. You know, when Jesus physically walked the earth, it was nice and great for those that were in his immediate circle. But, you know, they had to wait their turn to talk to Jesus. Amen? You know, if, if Peter was talking to Jesus, John and Matthew, Bartholomew, all of them had to wait. You know, you couldn't just talk to the Lord anytime you wanted to because, you know, Peter's talking right now. And Peter, you know, he was all over the place, so he probably took up a lot of Jesus' time. Amen? Well, Jesus, you know, what do you think about me cutting this guy's ear off over here? Well, Peter? That's not what I want to do. Amen. And John and them back in the background. Here we go. Here we go. See, he always want to cut somebody, you know. And see, you got you to sit there and wait for Peter to finish this long dissertation with Jesus, you know. But now we have a better covenant built upon better promises. We, don't, we just walk right on into the throne. Father, Father, I just want to acknowledge you right now. I just want to thank you for your goodness. And you ain't got to wait in line or nothing like that. You know, your cousin them, you know, sitting there crying at the feet of Jesus. And, you know, hey, will you please hurry up? No, 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 no. We just go right on in. 
He can talk to all of us at the same time. Glory to God. You carrying on one conversation, they carrying on another conversation, and, and everybody's, he, he, he's so awesome. You know, some people can't walk and chew gum at the same time. You know? But glory to God, we serve an awesome God. He can talk to all of us at the same time. Glory to God. And understand and respond and got the answer for all of us at the same time. Glory to God. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? You'd be surprised. It's millions out there. Don't know what they have access to. Amen. And he's on the inside. Glory to God. He's taking up resonance on the inside of you. If you're a child of God and you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit takes up resonance on the inside of you. Amen? And you want, to, you want to acknowledge his presence in your life. And the way that you acknowledge his presence in your life is by thanking him, giving him praise, and acknowledging his word and doing. Amen? We are learning how to be led of the Spirit of God. You know, the Roman, Romans 8 and 14 says, but as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Amen? So once again, we're talking about being led of the Spirit. Now, all right. Now, many Christians think that God authorizes them to gamble or play the lottery, and you hear them make statements like, you know, when I hit, you know, I'm going to give such and such to the church. When my ship come in, I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right down to the church, and I'm going to get them half of it. You know, and they may do that. The likelihood that they're going to do it is probably, you know, slim and far in between. And the reason why I say that, because that same person will not give 10 cents out of a dollar on a regular basis. And now listen now, Jesus made it, you know, God is always right. Amen. Say that with me. God is always right. So when he made that statement, you also got to remember that he also made the statement. Said, but it, He says, he who is faithful over that which is least will be faithful in that also which is much. So if you won't be faithful over 10 cents, we know what you're going to do when 10 million show up. If 10 million show up, you're going to... You're going to do what you've been doing. You know, Creflo Dollar made this statement that he said about money. He said, money is a magnifier. You know, so if you got a, if you got a, you know, a $50 a week meth habit, you know, you get, you know, you hit the big number, you're going to have a $500,000 meth habit. You're going to kill your food self. Because money is just going to magnify your ability to do what you've already been doing. Amen. So plainly put, you need to learn to do in the least thing. Be faithful over your finances in the least, over in the little. Me and my wife, we bring our tithe in, and we expect God. You know, we don't make big money. But guess what? We have big money in God. We have big money in God because God does supernatural things for us all the time. And people are standing back looking like, well, how y'all get to do that? I mean, y'all going where again? Man, y'all balling. No, oh, we serve a balling God. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We don't spend what other people spend on, on vacations and stuff. We be sitting right there in the room next door, chilling, you know. And they, they you know, they think, oh, well, they must be, they must be balling like us, you know, da, 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 you know. But guess what? We serve a balling God. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all excuse my vernacular. Sometimes it's, you know, I get a little, I get a little street, a little hood sometimes. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I, you get where I'm coming from. Amen. We serve an outstanding God. Amen. And I want you to get that more than anything else. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now also, look at this. How do we know that that's, you know, People who gamble, people who play the lottery, people who do games of chance. How do we know that that's not spirit-led living? Because, you know, you know, they're quick to say, well, you know, uh, you know God's going to bless, bless this. God's blessing this. 
You know, I just won $300 the other day. You know, God blessing me. Well, let's look at it. God's definition of prosperity is outlined in the giving of tithes and offerings. What we do with our finances, if you want to, if you want to find out how spiritual you really are, look at, look at your bank account. Look at what you do with your money. That will locate you real, real quick. Oh, man, tell you, oh, uh -oh let me close my eyes. Y'all smile. Tell your face you're happy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't shout me down in this Holy Ghost church because I'm preaching good. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But it's the truth anyway. Amen. And the Lord told me not to be afraid of your faces. Glory to God. People make faces at your brother. Why you say that? Don't be talking about me. I ain't call your name. I ain't call your name. Don't nobody know. Won't nobody know we're talking about you. You just smile. Keep looking ahead. Here's how, here's, here's how you diffuse all that. You just, just, yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, preach it, brothers. Just somebody need that. You know, we ain't call nobody name. Amen. Glory to God. I'm not going to anyway. The Lord ain't told me to do that. God is not a, not, a, not a God of confusion. He's not trying to embarrass you, make you look bad. He's trying to make you come up. Glory to God. He wants to bless you. And this is how you get blessed. Hallelujah. Tapping into God's system for finances. Amen. We're talking about spirit-led living. Amen. And you don't have to tap it. You don't have to do it the world's way to be blessed and to get blessed. When I bring my tithe and offering into God's house, amen, and I said it before the altar, and of course, we're not talking about physically doing that, but glory to God, I, I do it on my electronic device, amen, but it's going, into, it's going into the kingdom, amen, and I know that I'm doing this because the Lord said so, amen, and not because I feel under pressure from somebody that's just preaching at the end of the day, because I've seen my life change because this is what I do on the regular, amen. I ain't sitting there, you know, there was a time where I was, you know, begging from pillar to post, you know, going from pillar to post trying to make it, amen? But I ain't got to do that now because I have learned that when I obey what God's words say, he said, I'll handle this. I will take care of this, amen? I got your back, amen? You ain't got to wait on this employee's credit union to do something for you. I'll do it for you, Amen? God's got a thousand and one ways to get finances and provision to you. Amen? But you got to believe that. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen up in here. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord said that he would confirm his word with signs following, Mark 16, 15 tells us. And, of course, God is not going to instruct a person to continually throw his finances into a corrupt worldly system that is set up to rob you. Playing the lottery is not designed to be a blessing to you. It's blessing somebody, but it ain't you. Because if you, if you keep a record of what you're sowing into this system, sowing into this system, giving into this system, you are giving out more than you're getting back. And when you do hit, guess what? You're just getting back a fraction of what you already put out. But you're so happy. Oh, man, I won 6000 <laughs> Woo! <laughs> And you're all excited about that, but you just spent eight thousand. Well, you still, you still, you still working uphill. You still working uphill, man. But guess what? God's got a way that's not like man's way. Glory to God, and He wants to bless you. He wants He wants you to have more than enough. He wants your household to be blessed. He don't want you driving around in the brokest, nastiest car. He wants you. To, he wants to set you up. And say, look, this is what I do for my kids. He wants to put you on showcase. Glory to God. He wants you to, he wants you, when you're asked, hey, I just saw you bought a new car, man. That's great, man. Well, how, how did you do that? You know, you just changed jobs and this, that, and the other, yada, yada, yada. The Lord opened the door for that. The Lord opened up the door for that. I can't take no credit for that. My credit was jacked up. But I started working on my credit. I started doing what the Lord told me to do. I paid these folks off. I did, I did what was right. You're going to have to do what's right now. You're going to you're gonna have to do what's right. Amen? For God to bless you. Amen? And then, you know, I, I, I paid my creditors off. I, the Lord supernaturally brought the money in so I could pay my creditors off and get my credit score right. And, you know, I started being more faithful in my tithing. I started becoming, you know, uh, more active in the things of God. 
being led by the Spirit, glory to God, and the Lord opened up the door. And he doesn't just do that for that one person. He wants to do that for you. Amen? Put your hand on your chest and say, God wants to do that for me. He wants to do that for you. Amen? Because God is not a respecter of persons. Amen? Amen? He's not a respecter of persons. He wants you to have it. He wants you to have it. He wants you to have it. Amen? More than enough. An abundant supply all the time. Amen? So when you see a need and he can touch your heart and say, I, I, need, you to, I need you to give uh, your next door neighbor $1,000. They just had something happen. They just had something happen. They, the Lord may not tell you what has happened, but something has happened, and I need you to give them $1,000. Well, you can't give something you ain't got. Well, Lord, I ain't paying my light bill yet. You know, you can't. If, you, if your stuff is still subject, you know, you can't. You, you, you ain't hearing God talk about giving somebody else $1,000. And your bill is fifteen hundred. You know, Lord, I'm still trying to get this other five hundred together so I can pay this bill. You know, but but when you have more than enough, glory to God. You have an abundant supply, glory to God. You can just yes, Lord. Let me get my let me get my checkbook out right here. Let me get, let me get that to him right now, right now. Because it's not a strain, it's not a pressure. Glory to God. You're just obedient to the things of God. Amen. And you continue to reap a harvest. Amen. Continue to reap a harvest. The Bible says, for as long as the earth remaineth, there shall always be seed time and harvest. Amen? And so we want to be tapped into that. Now, now of course, we've, as we forestated, how does, how does the Spirit of God communicate to his children? Number one, through his word. The Bible says, you know, and the word took on flesh and dwelt among us. Amen? And so the word of God is the first avenue by which God talks to his children. And see, that's the, that's, the, that's the determining factor on whether or not God is talking when you, when, you hear vo- when you hear something come to you, when something comes to you, when you get something in your heart, God talks to you, and it must line up to the word. Because if it does not line up to the word, you cannot place any confidence in whether or not that was God talking to you. You cannot place any confidence in that. I suggest that you don't. Because... Case in point, example. Um, <clears throat> you meet somebody on the job, you're single, you meet somebody on the job, you say, well, this, you know, this person's interested in me. I think we should date. But they're married. Well, 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 wait a minute. Hold on here now. We can't put no trust in that statement because, A, God is not the author of confusion. A, and God hates divorce. So we know, based on what's established in the Word of God, because that is our that is our gauge on whether or not God is talking. Amen. If God's Word says that this is wrong, you cannot come around with your ignorant self and say, "I know that that was the Lord." I'm going to take this married person and take them right on in. No, you're not. You can go to hell. You and your devilish thinking. You don't want to do that. Nobody here is doing that. Amen. We're talking to somebody out there in the Internet world. Amen. Somebody, somebody, somebody. No, nobody here. Amen. We, we love God. We're doing what the Word of God says. This is for somebody out there. You, know, you need to stop that. You need to stop that. You need to understand what the Word of God says, and you need to do it. Amen. See, so, but nobody here. But see, that's how we. That's how. That's where people get crossed up at. They're thinking they're hearing from the Spirit of God, but they're really hearing something else. Amen. <clears throat> Everything that that God says lines up to what's in in the Word, what's in the Scriptures. You hear people talk, all the time talking about God is love, and that's a true statement. God is love. However, they use that statement to validate, validate their homosexual relationship. Hmm, what up with that? Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. His commandments are outlined in the word of God, the Bible. Now, the word also, all has already told us, God has plainly outlined that any man or woman that lies down in an intimate way has com- with another, with a person of the same sexual orientation, 
has committed an abomination before the Lord. Now, if you look up the word abomination and see what happened to folks after abomination was used, it was never good. It was never blessing. It was never joy and happiness. You committed an abominable thing before the Lord. Amen? Uh, I, I, I describe an abomination as being like taking the word dislike and multiplying it times a million. That's, that's an abomination before the Lord. That's how much God ramps up the, what abomination means when you commit an abominable thing before the Lord. And homosexuality, yes, is an abominable thing before the Lord. Amen. And he hates it. Just in case y'all weren't clear where I stood there. I'm, I'm standing where God stands. Amen. Amen. We stand where God stands. Amen. Because there's safety and peace and joy and the blessing of God rests on standing where God stands. Amen? And the only way you're going to know where God stands is by finding out what's in his word. Amen? Most people are too lazy. They want to they sit there and look at the, look at the, the televangelist all the time and, and, and rely on them to give them, you know, what God says or, you know, what his standard is. No, you get that Bible out and you read it for yourself. Don't trust, don't trust what I say. Amen? Get your Bible out and read it. Amen? Don't look at me sideways. Get your Bible out and read it. Amen? Find out what God's word is saying to you because that's what it's designed for. This is a personal letter. The Bible is God's personal letter to each one of us to tell us how to live. Amen? So how we can be blessed and have the great things of God in our life. Amen? Amen. So one of the first things, we talked about the word of God being the first criteria for being able to hear the word of God to being led by the Spirit. We're talking about being led by the Spirit, having a Spirit-led life, amen? The other way that God talks to us is by the still, small voice. All right, go ahead and, and look here in 1 Kings in 19 and 12. God leads us through that still, small voice. It's not this, not this loud, PA-type booming voice, you know, I am the Lord, hear me. You know, if we had that all the time, we wouldn't have, you know, that's real easy to discern. But guess, guess what? God doesn't do that. It's that other fellow to do that. Mr. Devil. He the one come with that loud, booming stuff. God speaks to his children in, in a still, small voice. God's a gentleman. He's not trying to force his way into our lives. That's the other fellow. Amen? So if you feel under pressure, if you feel like something's just jabbing at you, you know, trying to spear you into doing something, you better check that out. You just, you know, you just, you know, all anxious and in knots and stuff, you know, and this, this, this is, it's, it's trying to drive you into a certain direction. I can assure you that's, that's not God. Because in the still small voice, God leads his people. It says over in 1 Kings 19 and 12, after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, but a, and after the fire, a still, small voice. God leads his people in that still, small voice, the gentleness of God. Amen. That, that, that gentle nudge, not this, ah, ah, you know. When you find yourself in that, in that type of influence, that's the devil. And you need to cast him down in Jesus' name. Get behind me, Satan. You're under my feet. Amen? Don't allow the devil to drive you because he's under your feet. He's a defeated foe. Amen? And he's a liar. So whatever he's trying to tell you that's going to be the outcome of him driving you into this direction one way or the other is a lie. And so you just need to step back. If anything, instead of stepping forward into it, you step back from it. You, take, you get further away from it. Amen? And wait on that still, small voice. Wait on that word that lines up to the word of God. Amen? Now, of course, the third way that the Lord leads us is through an unction. It says, but it says over in 1 John 2.20, write that down. It says, but we have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And that word unction in the King James is, is uh, translated as an anointing. We have an anointing from God. 
Put your trust in the anointed one and his anointed. The anointed one is who? It's Jesus. Jesus is the anointed one. Put your trust in Jesus. Amen. And we must be willing to get alone and quiet before the Lord. Amen. Because, see, we're in this microwave quick society where, you know, you got to have it yesterday, you know. And, see, our generation is really, you know, we've, we've had so many technological advances and so many great and wonderful things that make life and things in life happen so much quicker and faster. But Jesus said he's still the same. He's still the same, and he ain't, he ain't rushing. Amen? Just because you want to give him 10 minutes, he may not choose to talk to you and tell you what you need to hear in 10 minutes. You might, be, you might need to have to sit down and wait a week. You might have to wait a month. You might have to wait a year or 10 years for certain answers. I know that's true in my life because I've asked the Lord certain things at times, and it was months, years later. And the Lord said, okay, concerning that such and such and such. What? Well, of course, I'm like, well, I would have liked to have that answer sooner. But I'm glad to have gotten the answer anyway. And I kept my faith out there for the answer. I didn't just stop and say, well, you know, forget it. You know, no, 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 no. Because I have learned some things about the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God does not work according to your timetable. Amen? He does, he, does, he does not work according to, you know, when your break is over with. You know? I mean, you know, so many times we won't, you know, because we, we roll up at McDonald's and we talk to the little box out there and they put it up on the screen and you drive around. And if I have to wait more than three minutes, I need to see the manager. Because that's, that's how we've been geared, you know? You know, you want to have it your way. You want it your way now. You know, you want two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, lettuce on a sesame seed bun. And you want it in two minutes. And you want hot fries. And they better not hand you out no hot fries. Because you ain't moving until you see somebody. And they better put, give me that free apple pie because I had to wait for some hot fries. Mm, oh, Lord. I hit somebody. Praise God. You ain't got to raise your hand. We're not asking for nobody. Raise their hand. You know, we've we been there. I've been there. Go to the restaurant, you know. If you're sitting down at a nice restaurant and it takes five minutes for somebody to come and, you know, just get your drink order, you got to see the manager. Sweetheart, where is your manager? I need to see them. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, we've been here eight minutes. And, uh, you know, nobody has been to our table to even get our drink orders. And, uh, you know, what's, what's the deal? You know, and that's how we are. That's, that's our society. This is, how, this is how we do. And then we try to translate that over into the things of God. And we can't do that. And that messes up a lot of people because they want this instant microwave thing with God. And it's just not going to happen. And the way, you, the way you come out of that is by studying and reading the word and be willing to get quiet before the Lord just because you want some fellowship time with him. Don't come, don't come in thinking, you know, well, you know, with, with all your, with your list of stuff that you need. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, uh, thank you, God, my, uh, my light bill. Thank you for giving me my light bill. Thank you, Lord, for the car payment. Lord, thank you for... Uh, uh, the children having food, uh, you know, and you just got all this list of stuff you're rattling off before the Lord. You know, you ought to come in sometime. Lord, I just want to praise you for your goodness. I just want to thank you for who you are in my life. Lord, I just want to praise you because you are God and there's nobody like you. I just want to honor you because you are, you are my God. And I just want to fellowship with you and tell you that I love you. I love you, Lord. There's nobody, there's nobody that I'm more interested in but you. I love you. You alone, Lord. You are my strength. You are my light. You are my salvation. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You spend 15, 20 minutes doing that, and that settles you down from the world. That settles you down. That, that brings down all this other stuff that's such a high priority. You're just humbling yourself before the Lord. 
humbling yourself, Lord, making yourself low, making yourself low, making yourself low, making God big, making God big, making God big. Make, and the bigger your God is, the bigger he is in your life. The more active role he takes in making sure you have more than enough. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, you know, uh, yeah, I, and, and I'm going to get through as much of this message as I can in the next few minutes. Glory to God. We're we wrapping this up. And I hope you're getting something. Amen. I hope you're getting something that you can use so you can take and you can put it straight to work as soon as you leave out the door. Amen. When you wake up Monday morning, you're like, boom, I'm, I'm going to spend some time with the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I'm going to spend 10 minutes with you, Lord. Well, that's better than the zero minutes you've been spending with him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, we're not trying to put down the fact that you ain't spent no time with the Lord. S to start. Glory to God. It's five minutes, glory to God. That's five minutes that you ain't been spending. Glory to God. And then you, then the next week you take it up to ten. Glory to God. You got to start spending time with the Lord. Amen. And you don't want to, you don't want to disqualify, discount the fact that it's important. You want to make this important because whatever you make important to Him, whatever you make important, He's going to make important. Amen. He's going to make your stuff important. You make His stuff important, He's going to make your stuff important. Amen. That's, that's right in line with what we're talking about with those tithes and offerings. You make, you make him first priority in your, fi in, 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 in your finances. He's at the top of the list. Don't nobody get paid before God get paid. Guess what? You'll see heaven and earth moving in your way. Glory to God. You have favor on stuff. People call you up out of the blue. Hey, um, you know, uh, we got this insurance policy that's, that, that you were a beneficiary on. It's, you know, it's 15, 20 years old, and uh, we just now... Uh, seeing your name here, and, you know, well, I ain't been moved. I got the same name, same location. Well, guess what? Now you've been honoring God. Now that stuff can get to you. That stuff can get to you. Unexpected money. Gifts and surprises. Glory to God. Start showing up. Glory to God. Get checks in the mail. You're like, ooh, mm, man, it's $20,000. Man, praise God. Hallelujah. Man, that showed up just in time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We serve an on-time God, amen? And when we prioritize his stuff, he prioritizes our stuff. Amen. Them angels get to moving, glory to God. Hallelujah. Unexpected favor and surprises and gifts and stuff start showing up, glory to God, because you put God's stuff first. Amen? And so that's what we're talking about. That's what we're encouraging you this morning, glory to God, so that you can be, this is part of being led by the Spirit of God, Amen? Now, being led by the Spirit requires that the person has a good, good reception or a finely tuned antenna. Glory to God. I know many of us are old enough to remember the, the, the radio, you know, where we used to have the antenna and everything, you know. If you wanted to, if you wanted to listen to a radio broadcast and stuff like that, you had to have, you know, your antenna had to be, you know, pointed a certain way. Glory to God. We need to learn. Glory to God. We must be willing to get alone and quiet before the Lord. Now, as we, as we examine what it looks like with an antenna, you know, being led by the Spirit requires a person to have good reception or a finely tuned antenna. The example of that is being close proximity to a radio tower and being on the right frequency. If the station is 92.5, you ain't going to hear anything being tuned in 105.9. You're not going to hear what's on 92.5. You forget it. You, you, you just out of, you're just out of the right frequency. You're in the wrong place to hear that. Now, we used to, you know, I used to listen to, you know, several radio stations in my, in my youth. And, you know, we had these little smaller radio stations. Anybody remember WMFR 1230? Anybody used to listen to that radio? Max Meeks and, you know, all them. You know, I used to, as a kid, I used to listen to that radio station, you know, because my mom listened to it. I really didn't have a choice, you know. That's what was on in the morning when we got up and everything. You know, they used to. You know, give all the news for the day and everything. And of course, uh, they used to have like Nito Corbain from High Point University. He used to have a, a segment on there that he used to talk and everything. I don't ever remember nothing he said because I was too young and I really didn't care at the time. You know, but that being said, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, you, you couldn't hear that radio station in Greensboro because it was a local station. You had to be close to hear that radio station. Amen. There was another radio station, WEAL, was on the AM dial. You know, uh, WEAL uh, back in the day used to be a, a second, 1510. It's still, it's still, 
you know, going. But it's a it's a Christian radio station now. But back in the day, they used to play, you know, R and B and you know, uh, rap and all that other stuff. And you know, it was one of my favorite radio stations. And you know, I used to come home and listen to it every day. You know, but it was in Greensboro, and it was you had to you had to move everything around just to get you had to move your little radio around to get a good signal and stuff. You had to point it towards Greensboro, amen. So you could hear the radio station, amen. And it, it was all staticky and stuff, but you know you, you had to turn the radio way up, and you had to listen over the static, you know, over the static. But I'm saying all that to say this: you know, a lot of Christians they're listening to God through a bunch of static. They can't, they can't, they can't hear God. They can't hear God because of all the static. Amen. But you don't want to be that. You you want God to come in clear. You want your you want your antenna tuned to W G O D, and you want it to come in nice and clear. Glory to God. So when the Spirit of God is talking, you heard everything, word for word. Glory be to God. That's what I want. I want when God start talking, I heard exactly what He said. Was no mistake. It wasn't. Huh, Lord? What, Lord? What? Huh, what? What, Lord? I'm, I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be me. And that's a lot of that's a lot of Christians. They ain't heard God clearly in a long time, if at all. You know what's surprising? You know what? You know what? People kind of look at you sideways. You know, you say, well, you know, the Lord said such and such and such to me. And then they look at you like, huh? And then another fellow Christian, you know. But what really should be surprising is that you've been saved 20 years and God ain't never said nothing to you. That is more surprising than me and God had a conversation, you know, this morning. Because, see, the Spirit of God is always instructing us, always giving us direction, always enlightening us and giving us things when you have an expectation that he's talking and that he's talking to you he's not just talking to the pastor he's not just talking to the evangelist he's not just talking to the deacon he's not just talking to you know the the, the great prophet he wants to talk to you every day and we need to be available so that he can talk to us every day amen because we get the benefit of him talking to us. Because he knows everything about everything. He is the best mechanic. He is the best plumber. He is the best hairstylist. Glory to God. He can help you with every aspect of your life. If you allow him to have access to your life. And the way that you have access to him, the way that you give him access into your life is by humbling yourself and allowing him to talk to you, having an ear to hear. And you want to be ever mindful, Lord, saying this, rehearsing this all the time, Lord, give me an ear to hear you. I want an ear to hear you. And the way you develop your ear to hear God, number one, is studying and reading the word. Studying and reading the word. Nothing more effective than studying and reading the Word. Then, praying in the Spirit. Jude 20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves in, in your, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Well, I'm not done, so I'm just going to unhook here. Amen? I'm going to unhook here. Maybe we'll pick it up some other time. But we're talking, we were talking about being led by the Spirit of God. Amen. I hope you got something this morning. And as we stated earlier, you know, every every human being on the planet is a creation of God. But every human being on the planet is not a child of God. But if you want to change your status from creation to son or daughter, we want to give you that opportunity right now. Amen.
And if there be, if with every head bow and every eye close, amen, every head bow, every eye close, if you're in this building today and you don't know that if you closed your eyes for the last time, where your home would be, where would you end up? You're not sure. And, and, I, and I want to be led by the Spirit of God. I want to have this relationship with the God of the all, all universe, the almighty, the all-knowing, the all-powerful God. I want to have a relationship that you've been talking about. And that, that, that opportunity is being extended to you right now. And you're saying, Brother Jeff, I've never had this experience of being born again, never receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, and I want that opportunity. I want to come into the family of God. I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to have the good things of life happen for me and my household. I want this. I want what you've been talking about. And I believe it's possible through Jesus. If that's you, if that's you, I want you to just just, just lift up your hand right now. And we're going to pray for you. Amen. If you say, Jeff, I, Brother Jeff, I just I want to come into this right relationship. If that's you, just lift up your hand. Every head bow, every eye closed. We're not spectating. We're not trying to see who's doing what or who's not doing what. Glory to God. This is between you and the Lord. Amen. And if that's you, I want you to just lift up your hand. Glory to God. We're going to pray for you. Amen. We're going we're gonna to make sure you leave here with just what you need from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. My second invitation, if you if you come into a right relationship with the Lord, and you, you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're born again, you know if you die right now, you go to heaven to be home with the Lord. Glory to God. You know that this is your this is your this is part of what you have, amen. But you have never received this the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. The Acts two and four experience which says and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. If that's if that's you, but you want this experience, you want to be able to to amplify your relationship with God, to 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 get more in tune with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. This is being made available to you. Day. It's rightfully yours as a child of God. It's yours. All you have to do is come up and receive it. Amen. And we want you to have it. And we're going to pray for you. And you're going to get it. You're going to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you're going to be in power. You're going to have power from on high. Glory to God. If that's you, you want this experience. You want this to be part of your Christian experience. We want you to have it. Lift up your hand. We want you to get this. Amen. Will there be one? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Well, everybody look up at me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Everybody's got what they need from the Lord this morning. Amen. We believe that something has been said to encourage you, to lift you up, to stimulate you, to propel you towards the, your destiny in the kingdom of God. Amen. We all have a destiny in the kingdom of God. And my role is helping to encourage you to get there. Amen. Hallelujah. We also want to invite you. Uh, those of you who, who, who have the availability to come out and be with us on Sunday morning starting at 1030, we pray over in the little adjacent room over there. We're, we're glory to God. We're getting fit in the spirit. Amen. Glory to God. We're working out in the spirit. We're building up our spiritual muscles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I always tell the, the ladies that come and pray with us and, and everyone that comes in, I say, look, we're going to be building up our spiritual muscles. We want you to do some spiritual stretching, glory to God. We don't want you to pull a hammy in the spirit, glory to God. We want you to be limber and, and everything. We don't want you to, you know, to catch a cramp, you know, glory to God in the spirit, glory to God. We just want you to be fit and ready for the master's use, amen. So as you're, you know, you, 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 you may pray at home some, you know, you find a little bit of a struggle praying at home. Well, come in and pray with us in, on Sunday mornings, glory to God. Hallelujah. You'll be, you'll be encouraged. We'll be encouraged. We'll lift one another up in the spirit. Amen. We're praying for various things. We're praying for you. Amen. We're praying for the laborers. We're praying for our pastors. We're praying for the ministry. We're praying for the vision of Faith and Victory Church. We're praying for our leaders in the world. Glory to God. We're praying for our president. We're praying for our mayor. We're praying for our sheriff. Glory to God. We're praying for the, the city council. Glory to God. We're praying that godliness will be exalted in our land. Amen. You know, we take these things for granted sometimes. But, you know, God cannot move in the earth except somebody pray. Amen. And that's what we are here for. This is part of our responsibility as Christians. Amen. To come and lift up our nation. 
lift up our, uh, our local and federal government uh, officials so that we can be and do what God has called us to do in these end times. Amen. Well, we're so grateful and thankful. We extend a special thank you to all of you who are here. Glory to God. My niece, Keisha, and TT over there, and got my little man right here. Yeah, I see you, boy. You're eating them Cheetos, ain't you? I know it, boy. We're so thankful that all of you have come out and be with us today. Amen. We, we pray that something has been said to encourage you and, and, and to uplift you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. All along, my son, they, they're here today, glory to God, Jason, they have it, glory to God, the grandkids, and all of you, thank you so much for coming and being with us today. All right, if you want to go ahead and stand to your feet, we're going to be dismissed, and uh, if you can stay with us and help us break down, we certainly would appreciate it. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to come and lift up your name. We thank you that as we leave this place, we will never leave your presence, that you will rest, you will rest on each and every heart. And seal into their hearts the words that were spoken that, that they, can, they can be blessed and they can be encouraged and they can go forth and be and do what you call them to be. And let the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now let the, let, the, let the Holy Spirit rest on each and every heart. And we dismiss you now and we call you blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen.